How are we doing guys? Welcome to DT's Daily. Now on today's show we're going to be talking about last night's Premier League games. Free games and uh, plenty of talking points and uh, plenty of controversy involving VAR again. Um, and the next piece of news involves Stan Kroenke because it looks like he's actually putting his hand in his pocket and giving money to Arsenal. I represent my fucking self. How are we doing guys? Welcome to DT's Daily. That's right. So before we get into today's show, let's go and have another look at a video from 888 Sport. Now we've seen the last couple and they've raised a lot of talking points. Well, I'll tell you something, this one is definitely going to raise some talking points. North London Derby on Sunday. Have a look at this video and tell me what you think. And yeah, I know that's down to Levy and down with the money and down to everything, isn't it? But me personally, I just think free signings and we're contenders, blood. For me, I think three what positions, signings, what positions? wing backs, wing backs, and a DM. What both sides? Yes, yes, yes. Obviously, you know you need uh, two wing backs for each. Me personally, I'd get four wing backs in it. But if we could have three players, I reckon we could challenge in it. When you're making top four, you get me again and again and again and again. You don't look. You've done it for three years, it. blood. So there we go. Will Arsenal or Tottenham ever compete for the title again? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. When have Tottenham ever competed for the title anyway? When? What? When they finished third in the two-horse race the year that Leicester won it? Come on. You know, Tottenham fans have never seen their team win a league title in colour. And you're trying to debate over who can challenge quickest and whatnot. No, 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 no. Don't even get me started. Don't even enter Tottenham into this conversation, okay? Bring in a Chelsea fan, Man City fan, Liverpool fan, Manchester United fan. We can all sit there together and talk about league titles and big trophies. Don't bring Tottenham in because all they can talk about is the Audi Cup. And it's as simple as that. But listen... I want you guys to tell me what you think. Um, the link to the full video will be in the description. Um, go to the comment section. Um, say that I sent you. I will come over there. I will see what some of you are saying. And uh, we can have a little debate about this if there even is a debate. I don't know. Links in the description. Watch the full video. So with that said, let's go and get into today's show. Starting off with last night's Premier League games. Um, and the first one was Everton against Southampton. Uh, stalemate in this one. 1-1, one, one, Danny Ings with another goal. Uh, Richarlison for Everton. And um, yeah, nobody could uh, get that winning goal. Southampton, 61% possession. 17 shots, but only four on target. 11 from Everton and 4 on target. And like I said, they just couldn't break the deadlock. And um, what it means for the Premier League table, um, Southampton sitting in 12th place on 44 points and Everton in 11th place on 45 points. Um, so yeah, it's, you know, honours even. And... Um, I suppose both of them are in a position in the league where they're just stuck in the middle. They're not going to get European football and they're not going to get relegated. So they're probably going through the motions and um, just getting the season over and done with. Um, and I can't really say no more than that on this game. Um, pretty straightforward, to be honest with you. Um, next game. <sighs> My word. Bournemouth against Tottenham. Nil-nil. And um, it's another one of those games involving Tottenham where I nearly fell asleep. And um, now there was a couple of moments in this involving VAR. Tottenham, first of all, um, for a push on Harry Kane in the box. Now, Jose Mourinho is fuming about it. Looking at it, yeah, it's a push. Um, but it doesn't excuse for how dreadful Tottenham were. Nine shots on goal, zero on target from Tottenham. 
It's the first time that a team has registered zero shots on target against Bournemouth since 2015. I don't know what to say. Tottenham's next game's Arsenal. I'll tell you something. If we lose to this lot, I will be fuming because they are absolute pony. And they've not progressed or got better under Jose Mourinho. Not in any way, shape or form. They should have kept Pochettino. They're just dreadful. But that was not the end of the talking point because in injury time, Bournemouth score. And you think, that's it. They've uh, gone and snatched it. They've won the game. Um, Callum Wilson, brilliant overhead kick as well. Um, but on the way in, it touched Josh King's hand. And you're looking at it and you're like, oh, that's harsh. But under the new law, you've got to give it. And uh, Bournemouth, they're going to be kicking themselves over that because that would have been an absolutely massive three points for them. Um, Tottenham, uh, they stay where they are. They don't go above Arsenal. Um, one point behind before that North London derby on Sunday, like I said. Uh, Watford and West Ham will be looking at that and saying, thank God for that. Um, but Bournemouth, they're running out of games. Four games left. And Aston Villa, yeah, they're really going to struggle. Uh, four games left and four points adrift because in their game, they lost 3-0 to Manchester United. Now, the talking point in this Another VAR incident, the penalty to Manchester United. I believe that's the 17th this season. It was not a penalty. Not in any way, shape or form was that a penalty. When you look at the incident and you see how high Bruno Fernandes' foot was and it catches the Aston Villa player in the middle of his shin, by the letter of the law, that's a sending off, isn't it? I know he didn't mean it. I know it wasn't intentional because he was turning on the ball in a move. But Eddie Nketiah, his wasn't intentional. He didn't mean to injure anyone. It's the same. But VAR gives a penalty to Manchester United. And one of the reasons why they were appealing for a penalty it's because Bruno Fernandes was rolling around the pitch as though he had just been shot by a sniper. Now, I'm sorry, but he's committed the foul. He's not been touched. He's actually instigated the touch. And it's like, you're rolling about everywhere. Come on, man. You're better than that. You're a talented footballer. You don't need to be rolling about the pitch like that, screaming as though someone's just chopped your leg off. Come on, man. And um, yeah, that was the turning point to the game because up until then, nearly 30 minutes gone, Aston Villa were doing okay. Um, and then, you know, Greenwood, Pogba, very comfortable evening for Manchester United. And um, I just don't get that first incident. I just honestly don't get it. How are you giving a penalty? How is it going to VAR and they're still giving it? Honestly, I don't get it. Manchester United still in fifth place. They go one point behind Leicester, who are in fourth, um, and two behind Chelsea, who are in third. Um, and they pull six points clear away from Wolves. And you've got to say that it's probably Chelsea, Leicester, Manchester United now that will be battling it out for that third and fourth place. But of course, we find out next week, Monday, um, as to whether that fifth place is a Champions League spot as well. So all three of them, could be, um, you know, having an easy run and it don't really matter where they finish because they would still all be in the Champions League. Um, and everyone else, yeah, you've got to look at that and say they're not going to turn that one around, not with four games left. Um, it's just, you know, too much of a gap for everybody else. And um, it is what it is. And uh, I can't say no more than that, really. But Manchester United, they keep that winning run going. Um, Ollie's at the wheel again as far as Manchester United fans are concerned but yeah we'll see how they get on for the remainder of the season and then going into next year no doubt um, 
Next piece of news, and this is very, very interesting news, and it involves Arsenal, and it's about Stan Kroenke um, and his KSE um, company and everything else. And to put it in simple terms, um, KSE are paying uh, the full £210 million stadium debt at Arsenal. Now, one thing I want to make clear is that Arsenal still have a debt to pay on the stadium. Some people seem to have this, you know, theory in their mind that the stadium's been paid off. It's not. Okay, we have an outstanding amount, and Stan Kroenke is paying £210 million to clear that debt. Now, I'm going to try and break this down a little bit from some of the reports that I'm seeing and everything else. And uh, you can take of it what you will. Um, but what will it actually mean? Uh, well, this will mean that there will no longer be a requirement for the over 30 million of cash to be held as a requirement of the old debt. Uh, this means the club now has uh, 30 million to use for the running of the club. Um, a number of things that could happen. Uh, the club could, as a debt free entity, um, wholly owned by its owner, go out and take a new loan at a lower cost of interest to the club um, and we could quite easily get a two to three hundred million pound of new bonds uh, given the club's value. Uh, the club could extend its borrowing. Um, it is understood that the club is into its overdraft facility because of Covid. Uh, this could well be increased up towards 50 million pound and has been placed untouched until Covid. Uh, KSE could put a more of a cash injection into the club or could also go down the Spurs route and a short term borrow until next March for use. Uh, the original bonds were £210 million. KSE has now paid off the balance, which I think is around about circa £160 million. Um, but with the pay down of the club's debt, the release of the club's held reserve cash the club's financial footing has been improved greatly, again giving it fully owned by KSE. Uh, now KSE could, if they now wanted, given the enterprise value of the club is around £2 billion, go and take a loan out on its asset and use it for raising cash for its company. Again, this could happen uh, given KSE borrowed the money to buy out Usmanov um, on anything and everything is possible. Um, so listen, that's quite interesting news. And um, first and foremost, you know, um, they sorted out that side of the debt. So we're not going to be having that to deal with. There's going to be money available. Um, with such a low interest rate on loans at the moment, it could be the time to take out another loan with a lower interest rate and because it's actually funded by, you know, KSE, there probably won't be an interest rate. There could be a lower interest rate or, you know, so much more flexibility in terms of, you know, the deal in comparison to the old one. Um, and given the fact that financial fair play is actually going to be relaxed this season, this could be the perfect opportunity for Kroenke to inject money into the club for Mikel Arteta to use to buy the players that we need. That might look like a long shot, and I know that I'm kind of just sitting here like this right now, praying, but listen, that's very good news, um, you know, that Kroenke's done that, and his company's done that. But we don't know the ins and outs of it yet. We don't know why they've done it. We still need to find that out, and that's going to be interesting. So... Yeah, we will find out very, very soon, no doubt. So uh, make it at what you will. So there we go. That is it for today's DT's Daily. Um, as usual, um, let me know in the comment section what you think, especially this Stan Kroenke, um, you know, news and everything else. Also the Manchester United game and the penalty. Come on, man. Surely nobody out there is going to tell me that's a penalty. I've seen even Manchester United fans that said they're embarrassed by that one. It's not a penalty. Um, but yeah, of course, um, getting very close to the North London derby. Watch out for the preview. It's going to be emotional. Um, if you're new around here, make sure you do hit that subscribe button. 
make sure you smash a like on this video and i will see you lot soon i'm out of here